This is Apex Race and today we will check out the Audi A5 Cabriolet, check out the exterior, the interior and then we will go for a quick test drive with the Audi A5. From the design language I would say is Audi close to BMW very very aggressive, Mercedes is more like roundish, Audi is very very aggressive from my perspective from the design language we have like for example in the hood like this four edges forwarded like on the side to the to the headlamps the head the headlamps are also very very aggressive like this triangle design which is everything is like leading forward to be also aerodynamic it gives like a wedge look which is um, yeah quite aggressive and sporty also the grille is quite big nearly the the whole front is covered by the grill to get as much air as possible to have like the power to drive this two liter turbocharged engine. Down here we have of course our front splitter and then some chrome applications around the grill and also near the splitter we have some chrome applications. I saw recently a S5 and to be honest there is no much big difference as I would say I think the only one I saw like in the fog lights in this grill in this net here there will have been also covered with some chrome applications but besides that uh, you cannot really see the difference. The sideline from the Audi A5 is a little bit higher. I would say the hip line is that here, this edge line which is going really from the front through the whole car to the back, back part of the, of the whole car but actually the car itself is a little bit higher. We have like a second line which is coming from the beginning of the hood really going through the whole car also on the upper so we have two two edge lines we are going through the whole car from the hood to the bonnet in the back and we have of course some line here down there <coughs> actually also for design or stability or both and besides that of course we have this classic cabriolet look which is also always remembering me of like a Rivera boat it's more like of cruising nice roads what uh, we will do hopefully the weather will be all right at the back of the Audi A5 things are looking actually as the same as in the front very edgy very aggressive design this double line coming from the bonnet is like one is here and the other is here and this is like splitting into half we have a lower part and we have an upper part and the both of them like in my opinion forming quite of a spoiler because that's that, that part the upper part is like etched also here and we have like this line which is looking in my opinion as a spoiler creating drag and things are also the tail lights very edgy design everywhere like edges uh, wedges everything also the bumper have some edges here continuing here and and very sporty very aggressive design in my opinion here we have like two exhaust tips actually it's a inline four cylinder mm, so maybe one is fake but overall the design language of the audi a5 cabriolet even if it's like a boatish uh, look it's very very uh, etched and aggressive. Let's check out the trunk of the Audi A5 Cabriolet and we have three methods to open it. One of course it's like to push this button here down below. The other one is to hold the uh, to like tip the key twice on the trunk release button and the third one is from the driver's side in the driver's door there's like a little button to open that so we are just pushing that here and it's going very fast up and you see it's like very stuffed with with thingies here and at least we can yeah we can transport two bags for four passengers it will be a little bit tight with personal stuff and the thing which is a little bit annoying for me we have like some uh, yeah, section here to operate the roof of course to, to ensure the operation of the roof and there is a key for it 
and even I have that flipped down that is like plastic uh, like hard plastic but uh, behind that there is like a soft cover and if you push something below that and it, it goes up the roof is not operating anymore of course I mean it's obvious why not and it's good but uh, it's a little bit annoying so you have to make sure only like hard cases hard hard gadgets are there no, that nothing is pushing up this soft fabric to the top let's check out what is below the hood of the audi a5 and for that we have to of course move this lever here and we see a inline four cylinder engine with a rear wheel drive and a turbocharger and to be honest I was so convinced that that car has a front wheel drive. I don't know why, maybe with the acceleration that the front, you cannot steer so well. Uh, but I have to be honest, I was thinking that as a front wheel drive. And of course it's not, it's a rear wheel drive car and it's, it's a good one. So nothing new here, we have like two liter, 150 kilowatts, massive big hood with some isolation and also this is like a rubber material uh, which is of course also isolating isolating the whole stuff the airbox may be on a strange position here here is the airbox which is grabbing the air from here it goes down here and then into the inlet but hey that are like very detailed solutions here Audi did the engineers in the end it has to work when I'm getting in closing the door my seat belt is uh, yeah, coming forwards to me and I don't have to stretch myself so much into the back. I just grab here and can fasten myself up. The rail is from plastic on plastic race and I have no idea how long that will last. I think or I am quite sure you can um, yeah, disable that option and uh, yeah, just don't use it. What you are not using it can't break first impression what we have very in this particular package very sporty because of the alcantara seats and i have to be honest they look great until they are clean and they are not for a long time clean they are getting so quickly very very dirty I drove now nearly 1000 kilometers with a car, mostly autobahn, without any transporting, really nothing. I'm just sitting straight driving forward and they are already a little bit dirty and especially when you have like fine, fine stuff like sand or something like that, it's a pain. It's a pain. It's really a pain or hair from from co-drivers so they look great but you it's so much effort to clean them besides that the whole design language from the outer outer design is coming also into the inside of the audi design language very edgy design we have like here edges we have on the dashboard edges the steering wheel looks very very sporty it, it doesn't have like this flat button but a very beautiful four spoke design with this hub center hub not like a roundish one but like more of a rectangle one very very nice design and what i actually don't like so much uh, as i said in the beginning we are in a cabriolet and things are a little bit more luxurious in the cabriolet unfortunately not in that one we have a very nice package of course like heated seats like this multimedia stuff heated uh, mirrors but the materials audi use here are actually not so great we have like this is like rubber on the dashboard like hard rubber i mean it's nice but it doesn't look so nice and you have everywhere like fingerprints and then this a blend here it's like a, a plastic a plastic one a quite hard one it doesn't look also so nice also that here is plastic so everywhere is like plastic no real aluminium um, yeah it that is not so nice over the bed really nice seats comfy one 
multimedia, everything is cool. On the driver's side, as I said, we have like this button here to release the trunk. Steering for all four windows and one for everyone, which is really, really cool. And then we have like a mirror adjustment. And with this very tiny, tiny roundish thing, we can, um, yeah, steer them, flip them and heat them also. Heated mirrors, nice, but hey, we are in a Cumberland. We are driving just in the summer, but we have them. Also like lock mechanism with memory seat function. Then on the left, we have some little storage department like from, for sunglasses. Then of course the light steering with fog lights. And actually, I don't know, in normal record or like modern cars, we have the automatically lights on function, which I experience is also for uh, the high beams. And that is a little bit, you know, the system is not working perfectly and I am always afraid to flash or like have a negative impact on my co-drivers out there. So I switch to normal lights and not using this auto function. Uh, so let me know if there is an option to disable that from the high beam. On the left we have a lever for, of course, the uh, lights, uh, indicators and the high beams. On the right we have the wipers adjustment. Of course the levers are plastic and stuff like that. And this place is the lower lever which is for the cruise control. And it looks actually a little bit old fashioned, outdated to have that as a special lever. Here down there we have of course set limiter distance. This is also just a minor things which I, which I don't like on the uh, design language. Then we have this four spoke multimedia steering wheel with um, shifting pedals, which are also like very plastic one. And you know, the negative thing is if you're turning, they are turning with you. Or plus, I don't know, I didn't like that so much. Then we have the multimedia screen, the view, so like the uh, board computer and on the right, the yeah radio stations, talking and phoning and stuff like that. Maybe we don't have like the most advanced multimedia system here. I am a little bit disappointed by the screen and by the gauges, but that I, I will show you separately. Like, I mean, we have like this tachometer, which is just saying, 50, 100 and then 300, <laughs> so the distance, uh, the range is quite broad and of course this car is not driving 300, maybe like when it's falling down somewhere and then the uh, revs and of course you have like written there in digits your speed but like likewise there are like not many things you can play around. So a little bit disappointing for a yeah, techie guy like me. But of course it's doing the job, right? Then we have the center screen here, which is like, I don't like this tablet design. It's flat, but it's just like, you know, it looks like somebody just put the tablet on that. And if you like, you can just remove it. Of course, it's not so easy, but I, I really don't like that. It should be somehow more integrated. We have the heated seats. We have the heated windows uh, back and forth. We have, of course, a glass a window back there some air control which is quite nice if you just hover with your finger above it it show it's actually off and it, it activates it itself and if you click on that changes yeah it changes and actually this is one part of this section is really nice to to touch it i think it's plastic or maybe aluminium i am not sure but the feeling of that the haptic is way more better than the other buttons here we have a, a drive select, we can choose between eco and comfort and sporty dynamic, which Audi it's calling at ESP off. Uh, park distronic thing is back off camera, like the, the sensors in the, in the front. Then we have the start stop engine button, which is actually aluminum, I can feel that. It, it feels good. Then we have some USB-A port here, some rubber for storage, the 12 volt cup holders which are not covered, so the open for the cup holders is always open, which is a little bit annoying when dirt is coming into that, so that should be covered. Also here, this storage department, I don't know, maybe for your wallet or so, let's check that with my wallet. Yeah, it's actually, it fits perfectly into that. 
the wallet. Then we have the gear selector, the shifter. In my opinion, it's a little bit outdated, like to have this whole thing. But when we are talking about a boat, we are cruising in a boat. This is like your throttle or like in an airplane, this is a throttle, a big throttle. You have to move it to the front and, and back. Maybe that was also the idea of the Audi designers. Seven speed automatic here, sporty mode and, and normal mode, let's say we have electronic e-brake and then the automatic e-brake. On the right we have some adjustment of the multimedia, the volume, and then we have the operation of the roof, which is very classic. We have two buttons, one is for opening, the other is for closing, and how that works I will show it to you. Continuing with the storage department, we have the armrest here and then it's just going up and then we have some uh, charging for your mobile phone, indication charging, uh, which is quite good, it's working and then some smaller departments and then we have also here a USB-C port and then some lower departments also like with this rubber mats, actually nothing you can you can adjust it, yeah, uh, but nothing really locked, which is a little bit sad, but hey, it's it's the way it is. So we have some um, sun visors, very small ones, maybe like I don't know, six centimeters, with a mirror with LED lights for driver and passenger. Then the uh, lights, very thin lights, of course, because of the roof. And then the glove department, which is quite big. Overall, I would say a little bit maybe disappointing the materials which have been used, but everything what you're you're touching and grabbing, it it has like some some stiffness behind that. It's not like you know it's so so oh it's like going down and it's so soft and so flimsy. No, everything is like you feel it's like a little bit harder, a little bit stiffer, and that gives you like a feeling of, yeah, that is well built and this is good quality here. Maybe it's not, but in the beginning, you have like this impression of a Audi A5. I will try to go into the back seats for that. I'm just using this lever here, and actually the, the seat is not driving forward just staying in that position. So I'm taking a step in, trying on the side to flip my feet and folding down the front seat. I am one meter 80 and I am feeling that, oh yeah, it's, it's like adjusted, it's like um, locked and there's like this little button and I can play a little bit with the driver and yeah, just move his seat forward and back to make my entrance and like going, getting out more comfortable. I don't know if that is also possible if the driver is sitting actually on the seat and I can annoy him a little bit with pushing the button. I mean, what is a little bit also annoying for me is this headrest, but I can move it forward. And actually, to be honest, it's possible to sit here, yeah? It's really possible. Um, from the leg space, it's okay. From the like upward seating position, what is also okay. What is not so okay is like that the rear seats are a little like curved band and I am like getting with my elbow and with my lower back I am getting into this like curved 
formation here and like yeah I mean this is harder than than my soft shoulder so I am like uh, pushed into the inside of the car which is a little bit strange um, that is a little bit like the armrest is a little bit cushioned we have some speakers here we have some plastic cover ambient cover I would like call it that way we have some cup holders we have some um, I think that's USB-A charging only but this is so narrow so tight I actually uh, let's try it out if that if that is like really fitting into it I will grab my USB cable from the front and I will try to put it I mean you see like this is quite long like three centimeters and yeah okay it's 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 fitting okay so you can back in the seat you can charge your phone only no multimedia actions and then we have also some um, ventilation here we can adjust that for the passenger no ashtray only just a 12 volt axis and the cup holders that's it so the A5 it's a, a real four-seater cabriolet I did also a POV video of me just driving the car without talking roof down on some nice country roads and roof up on the German Autobahn driving very very fast so check out that video if you're interested so uh, of course it's in the description and in the comments so just click on that and you can see that so let's start the car pushing the button of course just hitting the acceleration and what we are seeing here is as I said in the beginning it's more F of a cruiser than more like a sporty car everything is quite like quite easy and and um, yeah convenient I have to say I nearly drove like this 1000 kilometers in dynamic mode and of course we have like the different modes which is like efficiency which is like eco and then which of, of course reacts on the gas pedal and on the shifting everything is a little bit slower yeah I'm hitting it and it's accelerating but not so fast then we have like this comfort mode which is no idea what's the difference I think something in between and then we have like an auto mode which is like actually adjusting itself to the behavior probably of the driver and then we have like this dynamic mode yeah which is maybe you hear that it's already um, switching down the gears yeah so you are a little bit more dynamic I would say maybe flexible and uh, very very nice steering um, the, of course the suspension is a little bit softer we are not driving here on the racetrack but on a, on yeah nice weekend trip or also for longer drives so the suspension is a little bit softer brakes are also very very good so not no problem at all with the brakes and the engine to be honest the engine could be a little bit more agile I mean we have like this two liter engine with the turbocharger uh, but you know there is like this turbo lag and let the let the man in front of us accelerate and then I will do yeah you, you see it, it, it goes it goes but uh, uh, but we were also like in a sport mode in dynamic things are a little bit different than in sport of course um, but in general in general a very very nice car also in in high speeds it's super stable I mean like every car up to 200 everything is very very stable let's let's ask myself if, if I would buy it probably not 
because I am not so into it yeah somebody who is really like into a brand then yes but this materials I mean outer look is one thing but the inside look and I mean I am inside all the time or mostly the time when I'm driving a car so it has to be also good the steering wheel really nice but this dashboard the materials not so convincing what is also to mention I mean this multimedia stuff and all that I, I, I'm thinking okay for what do I need really this gauges here it, they don't make sense at all it's really the speedometer like on the right is like totally useless really on the left the refs are also I mean come on it's like from 1000 you don't see uh, there is no one and no zero so you only see two and four and six and at six the red line begins so uh, yeah this is this is really strange and then yeah we have some thingies to play around average fuel consumption for 875 kilometers and average speed is 71 kilometers per hour and uh, I was like when I had the chance on the autobahn, I was pushing it. I was like driving 200 and plus. But unfortunately, I think like everywhere, there are construction sites and then you're like forced to break down to 60. Uh, some curvy roads, you will see that also in the POV video. Oh, an R8, R8, <laughs> a bigger brother. So I'm push pushing that, it was like 15 liters and now after the 875 kilometers we are at 7.5 liters on 100 kilometers which is for a two liter engine turbocharged i think it's okay it's okay it's not great but it's okay and as i said i was driving 200 plus sometimes so if you I would say if you drive it really really not as me <laughs> more like on 130 on the autobahn then you can go to maybe six liters depends also how much city driving you are doing so yeah I don't want to talk too much without any point so I would say you have like a nice overview about the Audi A5 Cabriolet and if you like that I would be happy about the thumbs up and uh, as I said any comments any questions let me know and check out the POV video and check out also the article I, I'm writing on my new website apex-race.com there are all the cars I have been driven written there and also with some more few words you can check out more stack specifications and yeah i hope you enjoy that and see you in the next episode